everybody, my name is Cameron, also known as Mega Pilot, and I'm here with Jordan, also known as Jordan the Miner, and today we have a our second episode of our podcast, and I'm going to turn this podcast over to my friend Christian. So here he is. Mecca underscore minor podcast, by the way, on my channel, and you can also find it on Jordan the Miner's channel, which is right down here with the Rush Hall Wilson. There he is. And then I have other friends, such as Mr. Fancy Dude, who has not been on for a little while since he, since he doesn't have a very good computer at his house. But he has to go, but he gets one over the summer. And my friend Warwolf, who does absolutely nothing. So you can subscribe to him if you want. Not advised. Okay, so Jordan, I mean Christian, you have anything yeah. to say? Um, no, not really. <laughs> okay, then you can announce our first topic. All right, our first topic is going to be um, random animal facts. Okay, you go ahead first. All right. Did you know that gorillas can catch human colds and other illnesses? Um, a newborn Chinese Do five wa- of them. Five. A newborn Chinese water deer is so small it can almost be held in the palm of the hand. Ostriches can run faster than horses, and the males can roar like lions. Mm. A lion in the wild usually makes no more than 20 kills a year. And the female lion does 90% of the hunting. Okay. Did you know elephants are the largest land animal in the world? The largest elephant on record was an adult male African elephant. It weighed about 24,000 pounds. And it was 13 feet tall at the shoulder. So that's 12 tons. That's like six cars. That's crazy. Elephants can live to be over 70 years old. Only one, only one mammal that can't jump. The elephant. The average weight for an elephant heart is about 27 to 46 pounds. Just the heart. <laughs> Elephants have a highly developed brain and the largest of all the land mammals. The brain is three or four times larger than that of humans, although smaller as to proportions of body weight. So, elephants carry a lot of weight in their heart. That's nice. They're always depressed. Okay. Why don't you go ahead and announce our next topic, Cameron? Okie doke. Our favorite technology, this is going to be a returning segment in all of our podcasts, such as also these fun facts. So, here's mine. 4K resolution. I record my videos in either 720 or 1080, depending on what I'm playing. And they look pretty nice. They aren't, like, horrible... Like someone recorded, like put an iPhone up to their screen anyway. So that's a normal TV. This is this is a normal TV. Sorry, this is a nice TV, and then this is an extremely nice TV. These are the ones that you can go into Best Buy and like stand a couple inches away from it, and you can not see any pixels. And people are saying, hey, if it has such a high resolution, it's going to end up killing us or burning our eyeballs out. That's what they said about 1080 also. (laughs) Like, this is horrible. There's way too many pixels. (laughs) 720p is the best thing you can get without killing yourself. (laughs) And at the time, they thought that of DVD also. And yeah, it's kind of funny. Okay. Okay. Christian, this is also one of my most favoritist technologies. All right. My favorite technology is the thing called Oculus Rift. So instead of sitting at your couch (coughs) playing video games from a screen, they bring the screen to you in, like, these glasses, and all you see is the video game world. You turn your head to the left, the whole game landscape turns to the left. You boss fight, you see the boss up close. You know, oh, it's them. 350. I thought it was 320. There's like really good graphics, and yeah, the main thing people were complaining about the DK of uh, the 
the original one, not the DK one, was the screen door. It looked like there was a screen door in front of them because they were so close to the screens, but now they're getting, like, three and a half K, so it's, like, almost 4K right next to your eye. So I'm going to get one million of these. <laughs> Aw, I can only get ten. <laughs> that would still be quite a bit of money. Yeah. Okay, now next th one. This is also one of my favorite pieces of technology because instead of just sitting on your couch using a controller, you can actually, it's a good way to kind of, I don't know, be more involved in the game. You use your hands, you actually use your head to look around and stuff. So I, have to, I thought that was really cool. Mm hmm. All right, do you want me to announce our next topic, Cameron? Sure. Our next cop topic that we're going to be doing is our favorite actors. And this next one is actually Christian's favorite actor, which is Morgan Freeman. Yeah, I really like Morgan Freeman. It's like one of the things. Like, if there's a Morgan Freeman commercial, you get jealous because of his voice. And then also in movies, he does really good at, like, dramatic characters or, you know, playing God and, like, Bruce Almighty or... He's just like a really good character all around. And his oh, face. Oh, by the way, Jordan. A chocolate you're, muffin, Jordan, so. I put your face on my video now. That's all right. So don't pick your nose. <laughs> there, there's a meme. This guy could say he killed your family with a chainsaw and it would still calm you down. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it would. It would. Okay. And mine? Liam Nesson. Liam Neeson. That's probably the right way. His birth name is William John Neeson. I don't know how he got Liam, but that's still a pretty cool name. Liam Neeson was born June 7th, 1952 in Ballymen, Northern Ireland, UK. To Catherine Brown, a cook, and Bernard Neeson, a school caretaker. Liam worked as a forklift operator for Guinness truck driver, assistant architect, and an amateur boxer. He had originally sought a career as a teacher by attending St. Mary's Teaching College, Newcastle. However, in 1976, Neeson joined the Belfast Lyric Players Theatre and made his professional acting debut in the play The Risen People. After two years, Neeson moved to Dublin Abbey Theatre, where he performed the classics. It was there that he spotted he was spotted by director John Burr and was cast for the film Excalibur, which was his first really big one as Sir Gawain, which is one of the big ones. And then goes through all of his other ones. He has a northern Irish accent, deep gravelly voice. Often plays agents or ex agents in an unusual situation. Okay. So Liam Neeson is pretty cool. I, one of my favorite movies that he is in um, is Taken. And then I also yeah. like that one. I forgot the name of it. But whenever he is in the airplane and non he's getting all these... Yeah, nonstop. I haven't seen that one, but I really like all of them that I've seen. <laughs> all right, do you want to so, announce our next topic? Yep. Another one that's going to be returning, Weekend Pictures. So this week, it's March 5th to 12th. It's 13 right now. So they just released this today. So, Jordan, you go ahead and do the first one. Talk about the first one. Okay, so Madeline Klonsky, two years old, sits on her father's leg at a kite festival in Redondo Beach, California, on March 8th, 2015. Okay, so I have something. I have kind of a story. My grandparents used to be really into kites like really into kites they went to competitive kite competitions and so th they had kites that had like little blades on the side of them and you would fly them around the air and try to cut up all of the other people so it was like that's kite, awesome it was like kite duels and they were really good at it and so they eventually had to stop because they were getting pretty old. They're getting older. And so, yeah. But they they did do it for a while, and they were pretty good at it. I don't know yeah. how she... I'll do the... What? 
I don't know how she was just grabbing onto his leg like that. <laughs> just his Probably foot not very hair. big. Ooh, this is one about protesters. Okay, a protester holds a plank to hide from a police water cannon on March 11 in Istanbul. During clashes following a protest in memory of a teenager killed in 2013, anti-government demonstrations, and whose death has become a rallying cause for opponents of the Turkish president. The protesters were marking the first anniversary of the death of Birkin Elvin, who died on March 11, 2014, after spending 269 days in a coma due to injury sustained when he was hit by a tear gas canister fired by police in the mass protests of early summer 2013. Yeah. So he died from an impact wound from a tear gas canister. Am I the only one that thinks that the f that the water cannon's coming the other way? It does kind of look like it, doesn't it? <laughs> but then, but then, I don't know. All the water's running downhill. Yeah. That's sad, though. That people are having to do this. Yeah. Like, hey, Bob, grab your plank. <laughs> Going protesting. Okay, Jordan, Jordan, I mean, Christian, you can do this one. All right. Police shine a light on a helmet as they investigate the scene where two police officers were shot outside Ferguson. Nine, were shot outside the Ferguson Police Department on March 12th in Ferguson, Missouri. So this is in relation to the protests over there, except it wasn't the police officers. I think people are taking this way too far. At first, it was just like, hey, guy died, we're going to go remember him. And then they're like, hey, this isn't good. And then they started rioting and burning buildings. Yeah. They, they like, threw firebombs into convenience stores. How's that going to help? <laughs> that That's just... Let's stop violence with more violence. Yeah, let's go remember someone by burning down their their favorite town it doesn't make any sense at all you know and then they and, and now someone shot into a group of police that were just monitoring a group of protesters to make sure they didn't get violent yeah both so, sides just bouncing off each other making it's crazy just a second Still there, Cameron? I paused it. That's Owen Wilson. Sorry about that. I had to talk. And we're back. Sorry about that. He just had to go for a second. Yeah. So this next one, do you want to read it, Cameron? Yeah. This is just awesome. A fisherman smokes a cigarette. That's not. That's not cool. But a fisherman smokes a cigarette as he waits near his rod under the a under the April twenty fifth bridge by the Tagus River bank during a foggy morning in Lisbon on March tenth. The name of the bridge was given after the Carnations of Revolu Carnations Revolution that restored the democracy in Portugal in April 1974. That's just a really cool picture. Yeah, just standing there like... Yeah, and the sun rays coming down off the bridge. Yep, through the fog and everything. Be and then the guy smoking. <laughs> okay, you can do the next one. This is an actor one. Ben, All right. Ben Stiller. Um, I thought that this picture is really funny. It says actors Ben Stiller on the left and Owen Wilson on the right make a surprise appearance during Valentino's Fall and Winter 2015 to 2016 presentation at Paris Fashion Week on March 10th. I don't know if anybody else has watched Zoolander, but this is very, very ironic. Especially that he's standing over here with Owen Wilson that played Lightning McQueen. He played Lightning McQueen? I think so. Well, I know that Ben Stiller <laughs> was 
on Running Wild with Bear Grylls. <laughs> and the extraordinary life of Walter Mitty and yeah. at the museum. All yep. of them, I think. Okay, next one. All right. A Russian backed female rebel fighter watches as colleagues perform during a beauty contest involving women from the main separatist battalion in Donetsk, Ukraine, on March 7th. Self proclaimed authorities in the rebel head held Donetsk held a beauty pageant for female rebel fighters on the eve of March 8th, a woman's day widely celebrated throughout the former Soviet Union. So, they do this in the American army also. They have, like, singers come and they sing for the troops and stuff. Uh, Johnny Cash did. Yeah, I think it's nice that they still, that even though they're, like, in the middle of a of battle... A- a battle war that they're still carving out time to do this stuff. It's it's hey, kind of. Hey, you wanna have a beauty pageant? <laughs> yeah, sure. Nothing's going on right now. We're fine. Okay, you wanna do the next one? Yep. <laughs> Pope Francis comforts a child as he arrives from heating in Aula Paolo Fourth at Vatican on March six. He doesn't look very comfort. I know it doesn't look very comforting. It looks like he's there like. There's so to... many people here that look like they're trying to photobomb. Like, yes. the girl in the upper right-hand corner. Yeah. She's yep. just sitting there staring. And then that one guy. Yeah. And then there's a guy who's, like, being buried by other people. And then the guy taking a picture of them from up above with his phone. And then that lady. Yeah. Did you see that lady? With the blue glasses. No. Uh, one person. Two people behind her. Oh, yeah. Her. Her. <laughs> And then there's this one baby to the side, to the left of this. Of the it looks that's... really confused. Being comfort, yep, yep. And he's probably <gasps> else. And he's then not all the people it. recording and stuff with their Canon cameras. Okay. Whoa. It's a lot of people. Go ahead, Jordan. Chow, not Jordan. Chris. No, no, I, I, you did the last one. Ultra-Orthodox Jews take part in a rally supporting the United Torah Judaism Party in B'nai Brak. Near Tel Tel Aviv, Aviv, March 11th, Israelis will vote in a parliament election on March 17th, choosing among party lists of candidates to serve in the 120-seat Knesset. It might be Knesset. This is kind of awesome to show that they're just uniting for the religion. You know, everybody's joining in. On a common belief. It's kind of kind of nice. You're pulling a cat, Christian. I am. You're stretching. And then do you see, like, the cars trapped in the middle of all the people? Yeah, no, like... like the the news stations? <laughs> Sometimes I wonder how news stations get places. Like, it's like, oh, yeah, there's, like, a war zone going on. Let's drive just, over there. They just teleport there. <laughs> and if you notice, there's people on the rooftops, too. Yeah, I And there's, I know. like, posters hanging down for their... I believe their favorite candidate. All right. Okay, next one. This one looks fabulous and I know. Fun right? times. I know. Police hit a student. Protest. Protesting protester during violence in Lep- Litpadan, Myanmar, on March 10th. After weeks of escalating tension, my Myanmar police. Crack down on students who have taken to the streets to protest a new education bill, which they say restricts academic freedom. Authorities said more than 100 people have been arrested as police on Tuesday pummeled the protesters with batons and dragged them into trucks. First of all, can I be the first to say that how many batons do these people need for one person? I don't know. Like, is there, like, a ratio that they have in, like, the police force? It's like, okay, yeah, guys, you gotta remember. 20 to 1. 20 to 1. 20 we batons to have to make to one sure person. we beat these people to a pulp. He's missing a shoe. Y- yeah, and, then, and there's, like, wood sticks just sticking out of the ground, and he's, like, all surrounded. That one dude that's, like, right diagonal from his elbow looks really into it. Like, the guy with his face is all scrunched up? Yep. Like, <laughs> beat... Uh, uh. And then He's... the dude, like two people 
next to him looks like he just really wants to get in on the fun of beating up this dude. Yeah, and then if you look like look behind, there's like a huge crowd of more police officers. Like if you go to the left side of the picture. Yeah, that like little one, that group one, of like like the guy's helmet, one helmet over, there's just like a crowd of police over there. Yeah, it's like five rows back and just keeps going. Yeah, and then there's like the guy sitting on top of the roof right above the really into it guy's head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Crazy crazy. So we got one more picture for this segment and then we're gonna go ahead and log off. But oh, it's this one. let's read this last picture. Okay, so this one's a little bit gory. Bullet holes and blood surround a note thought to be written by his name, Sarnov. In the boat where he was apprehended in Watertown, Massachusetts. The government released transcripts and stills of notes scratched directly onto the boat on March 10th. Sarnov is being prosecuted for the 2013 marathon blast that killed three people and injured dozens at the race's finish line. What does it say? I'm jealous of my brother. I'm jealous of my brother who revived the war, the, the reward of genital fri- genital Fridays in Shala. Before me, I do not something because his soul is very much alive. I do God not mourn. has a plan for each person. Mine was to hide in this boat and shed some light on our actions. I ask Allah Allah to make me a shepherd. I don't know. To allow me to return to him and be among the ghosts, the ghost people in the highest levels of heaven. He who Allah... Guild, no one can something. Wait, and, and the then per- there's a bullet hole scratching out like a something. Wait, so who, who whoever, wait, who kn- wrote this? Wasn't it was it was the brother of the guy who did the Boston Boston Marathon bombing, and he wants to be in the highest level of heaven right now because he helped. Yeah, but Christian, you have to look at it from their point of view. They were doing this for their god. This was a good deed for their god. And so, by doing this, they're... They're... In their religion, they think they're going to go to the highest level of... Heaven. Yeah. Their heaven, at least. Then we'll just quickly scroll through these. Jerusalem. Oh, lady dancing? dancer, yep. People coughing. Five-minute blood sugar killer. (laughs) (laughs) Loved ones weep during a funeral. Uh, of some this? person, a coal miner who was killed in a mine collapse at a mine on March 6th in Ukraine. A total of 33 miners were killed in the collapse. The miners were buried in a cemetery which borders the coal mine. They were- oh, so that's nice. So if the mine collapses again, there's a possibility that the bodies could like explode slash collapse back into the mine. Mm-hmm. That's nice. Yeah. If it, like starts to burn itself out have you seen that no where like a coal mine gets lit on fire and then there's just like cracks in the earth and there's like fire coming up through them and they burn for like years and years oh yeah we've heard of those we did those last year mr hovers and they're like almost impossible to put out because they just they just just keep burning you know the three the triangle of a fire heat oxygen fuel yeah it has plenty of fuel. It's not going to run out of oxygen. And, and there's, there's a lot of heat. Oh, yeah. Okay, so thank you all so much for watching. My name is Cameron, also known as Mecha Pilot, and I'm here with Christian, who is in joint with Jordan the Miner. Thank you all for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe to both of our channels. And we really enjoy your support. So thank you. See you next time. Signing off. Cameron and Jordan, Mecha Pilot, out.